Parents are anxious from the moment you're born. One moment, they're telling you, man, we can't wait till you get out of the house. And the next moment, they're pestering you for every little thing outside of the house. Raj, have you found your research professor? Raj, did you do well on your last chem test? Raj, have you studied for your math quiz? Beta, have you written your TED talk that you said you would write two weeks ago? Come on, dad. I mean, the answer to all these questions was obviously no, but that's besides the point. It doesn't have to be this way. It seems just like yesterday I was applying to the Texas Academy of Math and Science residential program, a program where we take college courses as high schoolers, parents for short. And boy, was my mom anxious. She was worried that without her to remind me, I would eat too many carbs, play too many video games, not exercise, not go to class, isolate myself in the dorm, my grades would drop. In general, I would be a complete disaster. Well, that didn't happen. However, their concerns were valid as many things can go awry when you don't have anybody to lead you. That being said, I want to address these concerns as hidden benefits, turning those weaknesses into strengths because parents won't be around forever. So I want to share with students how to leave that nest, sure-footed. And I'm going to share with parents how they can deal with that empty nest and finally cut that umbilical cord. Like I said, I live in TANS, a residential program. Well, I lived at TANS due to some extenuating circumstances such as the COVID-19 pandemic. I have changed my living space, but that doesn't mean I don't miss TANS. However, not too long ago, I was kicking and screaming. I mean literal begging my parents not to send me to TAMS. I wanted to remain comfortable in my old school with my old friends. However, they convinced me, albeit through some questionably legal methods such as blackmail, and I took that giant leap forward. I haven't looked back since. I urge all students at least to try getting out of their comfort zone and spread their wings. First of all, you're going to meet amazing people. Because of the nature of residential programs, you aren't just going to meet people that come from your area, but all around the world. Last summer, I went to the Stanford High School Summer Session Program, a program where we take undergraduate courses at Stanford for college prep. My friends at Stanford still organize group calls every month to catch up on how we've been. My roommate was from China. And I've met people from at least a dozen other countries, such as Germany and Canada. These people from different countries have allowed me to grow my empathy, cultural understanding, and self-awareness for other people. In fact, one study found that students with friends internationally have higher scores of open-mindedness and lower scores of cultural apprehension. And the benefits don't just stop there. Your friendship can evolve into working relationships. I have a friend from Utah who's working on a graphical user interface for a program that manages his tasks and people. And sometimes, occasionally, he asks me, hey, Raj, what's the best program I can use for this? Or what's the best algorithm? My friend David from Germany always helps me with my LinkedIn page. It's amazing how easy it is to establish these relationships once you've worked in a shared space, networking becomes effortless. And don't worry about your old friends from home. I stay in contact with them till this very day. It's not that hard. Next, you're going to have to learn how to grow up. Gone are the days where you could freeload off your parents' money. You're going to have to learn recipe number one in every college student's cookbook. That's right, ramen noodles. In fact, I could go on and on about all the things you need to know, but I think the nurses from where I volunteered last summer can do a better job. Here's what they had to say while I was at Stanford.
God, you see, if I had knew that this is what was going to be playing when I opened that text message, I would have never opened it. Imagine my surprise and the eight other people around me when they heard that I should stay away from the ladies. Speaking of embarrassment, you're going to have to learn how to deal with awkward social situations. No longer do you have the solace of your home to fall back to. You live with them, and you're going to see them every day. Trust me, it's a lot easier to patch things up rather than hold grudges. You'll learn that issues that seem big are just minor incidences that you'll joke about later. This isn't Tuesday at your high school where there are five new couples and three breakups. This is real life. We live in an age of electronics where people are constantly on their devices. In fact, you can not meet with a single human throughout your whole day if you wanted to. This is bad. A study from the uh, San Diego State University showed that living this way can lead to constant anxiety and bad grades. You can break this habit with residential programs. When you're surrounded by like-minded peers, you'll find those interactions and conversations a lot more stimulating than online activities and you'll become a more social and preferable person to hang out with. There's research behind the academic side of things as well. The most notable was conducted by Alexander Aspen, the founder of the Higher Education Research Institute at UCLA. His five decade work shows that living in a residential hall has a positive impact on degree attainment. With these increased social interactions, I would make mistakes. I'm only human. I would have trouble with time management. Sometimes I would stay up too late or not study for classes. Other times I would accidentally offend somebody that I cared about or just not understand what they were saying. The difference in, exp in experiencing these shortcomings early in your life is that you learn so much more from the mistakes you make. And they'll be able to prepare you for college because your parents are gonna help fix them, you're gonna help fix them. You own your successes, and you own your failures, and you grow because of it. Finally, and this is the big one, there are no parents. That means you can do whatever the heck you want, right? Well, almost. You are completely off the training wheels. You still have residential assistants and directors to help guide you. That being said, you don't have any of the normal restrictions imposed on you. You don't have class from 8 to 5. I mean, sometimes you won't even have class. This will allow you to sleep in or stay up late. This is when you must use what your parents taught you and drive your plan. Now, as depicted here, inevitably, you will almost crash that plane. But everybody makes mistakes. The most important thing, though, is that you've gained that experience. So when it comes to prime time, you won't make those mistakes. Due to these experiences, I feel like I'm a more sophisticated person in every sense of the word. I'm better at time management. I'm better at talking to people and understanding them. I'm more empathetic. I know how to study better, whether using my signature headphones to block noise out or to manage group sessions. I've made lifelong friendships and deep connections with the people around me. And this is not just limited to just me. Research from Utah and Song shows that these programs increase social awareness and happiness in people. Most importantly, they'll prep you for college, where you're likely you'll be living away from everybody you knew. Well, how about the parents? Well, after living away from your child for a while, you'll start to get used to not knowing where your child's whereabouts are 24-7. It's going to be odd not having the back. So it's important that you know that feeling before it comes to shock you later. Does that mean completely neglect your child and go out partying? Please do not. Take it from us Generation Z hipsters, we need you guys, okay? We need your constant nagging to get stuff done. Another reason is that you'll be sure that your child is well equipped to go to college. Since they already have experience in a productive environment away from home, 
they would be able to utilize that experience to succeed in college. It doesn't mean don't check up on them every once in a while. I mean, I know my parents check up on me more than once in a while. But you'll be more confident in your child's ability to succeed. And what you should look forward to most is that they are out of the house. You do not have to worry about what your teenage kid is doing, and you can do whatever you want. Go to that restaurant you've always wanted to go, or see that new place. No matter what it what is you want to do, things that weren't available to you are now available. So while I'll encourage all these students to join these residential programs, I encourage the parents to encourage the students. The thing that you think your student isn't ready for may be the thing that sets them on the right track. Think back to when you were a kid in college and all the mistakes you made that could have been avoided if you had just had more experience. Leaving the nest is a scary prospect in itself. There are many risks that come when letting a child loose into the wild without a compass or a map. However, in my humble experience, when you're on the wild, you make your compass, you make your map, and when you fly to wherever you want to go with considerably more conviction. The sky's the limit. I'm Raj. It's been a pleasure, and thanks for listening.